<laughs> Hi! <laughs> Welcome to Life in the Bottle, Season 1, Episode 30. 30. All Indeed. hands on deck. Indeed. Uh, this week we're here to talk about this lovely red wine. I'm Mitch. This is Kyle. This is Cody. We are in the lovely country of France. More specifically... In the Loire Valley. Even more specifically... We're in the region of Nantes, and we're in the Moscadet district, and we're in the village of Clisson. Clisson. This is the 2018 Domaine Pepier, Pepi Co. 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 C O T. Co. 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 Not cot. Not cot. It's Co. Co. Co is French Malbec. Malbec? I thought that was Argentinian. You know? Hmm. <laughs> you know where they got their, their Malbec from? They France? From France. Ah. It always goes back to France. You guys harmonize Almost. really Quite often. Right there. <laughs> yeah, that I know. Nice. We were kind of like the Beach Boys, weren't we? Uh, uh, so yeah, this is like one of the great, one of Muscadet's best producers, Domaine de Pepier. We've been selling these wines at least since I arrived there in Conos. Um, and their Muscadets are absolutely top notch. You might know they're just regular Pepe Muscadet. They make sort of like a, right. mm. an entry level Muscadet and Briard and Clisson. And uh, they're just masters, but they also have a little bit of red wine planted on the property. When you say a little bit, tiny, it's just like a little bit. Scotch. It's like a 43 <laughs> hectare property, which they farm all, all organically. And three of those hectares are planted to red grapes, and that is shared between Cab Franc and Co. Mm. Um, I'm going to show the back label real quick. Do it. Although they'll see it in the rotating label shot as well. So, <coughs> who imports this wine? Uh, our friends at Louis Dresner. Mm -hmm. And what are they known for? They are known for um, French and Italian wines, but you know some some wines from all over the world as well. And uh, they're often in a very non-interventionalist style, mm -hmm. which is kind of just letting letting the fermentation do its own thing and allowing the wine itself to dictate the course of the winemaking process. Um, which. Um falls in line with what we're all about. Yep, very hands-on. Small production, let Mother Nature give very you conscientious. what you get. You mm -hmm. don't get upset, mm -hmm. and you make the best with what you got. Great, mine is made, great wine is made in the vineyards. That's, That's it. true. Yep. All right, um, I say we jump jump right in. Sure. Why not? Why not? We were just saying it's nice, opaque, kind of purple color. Yeah, oh, yeah. it's pretty inky. Oh, yeah, yeah. super inky. You got some translucence around the edge, but that core is super deep. The thing is, it like clings to the glass nicely too. It's like almost glass staining. Oh, you, got, you got some dark tears there. Ooh. Oh, that nose, nose is fun. All kinds oh. of lovely things. This is oh, yeah. phenomenal. Mm. The fruit this comes is... through, but it's not. That's not the star of the show at first. Yep. It's there. First thing I smell is like chalky mineral. It's a very mineral-driven red wine. Yep. And some cracked um, pepper right behind mm. that. Definitely. It's very important to distinguish. This has literally nothing to do with the Mendoza Malbec that you're familiar mm -mm. with. Um, this is made cool climate France, and the wine just is totally different. More close to like a Pinot Noir style, and more far away from like the Cabernet style. Correct. But very much its own thing. Reminiscent in a way of uh, Beaujolais. Stylistically, yeah, it's a bit bougie. Yeah, a little bit, you know? a little a bougie. bougie. Not bougie. It's a, it comes in, <laughs> comes in at twelve percent alcohol, so it's definitely lighter. It's lighter in the mouth, lighter feel, a little leaner, higher acid. Mm -hmm. It's crunchy. Yeah, the freshness. It's brambly. Yep. Mm. It's great, bright berry. And it's got some tannin too, mm -hmm. but it's not it's not rugged tannin. It's just like a nice medium tannin mouth coating. Mm -hmm. the thing is, brambly. I don't even know what that is, but you're absolutely right. Berries, man. Yeah. Berries. But yeah. like a brambly berry, you know? Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Like, wow. like something mm -hmm. you just picked, like, in the yeah. wild. That yeah. chewy, exactly. wild bush. Just right, yep. blackberry. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, I got you. Mm. That little bit of pepperiness, and like Cody was saying, there's just enough tannin to kind of round out the juiciness. Because mm -hmm. it's not a super full-bodied wine, mm -mm. but there's just enough tannin to kind of back it up nicely. It's, it's nice and juicy. Mm -hmm. yep. Good what tannin, good with? acid. Ooh. I feel like it's versatile. I feel like Malbec screams for anything roasty. 
Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, Whether it's yeah. meat or vegetables, uh, something on the grill, especially with a quick chill on this bottle, 20 minutes in the fridge kind of thing. I think you could even do like a like a, a roasted chicken even. Like 100%. if it's got enough herb in there and yeah, stuff. Absolutely. That, like, For sure. Yeah. I, was thinking, I was thinking roasted game and definitely like roasted pheasant. Mm -hmm. Like you guys ever had Bernard's pheasant? Something, mm. something like that. Like kind of like Bernard's pheasant. Like a squab, something along those lines. Yeah. Even duck. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I love duck. I feel like mushrooms with this, particularly as well. Yeah, that's what mushrooms. I do. Yeah. Maybe on a pizza, perhaps. <laughs> it's oh, Friday. The pizza's coming out. It's the first Friday take. pizza. That's it. <laughs> well, I got two pizzas just in case we went multiple takes. So speaking of roasted vegetables, there you go. And I went thin crust this time from 850. Oh, very nice. So uh, you guys dig in, and there is some mushroom in there. And Mmm. Mm. Crunchy. Mmm. Mm. Crunchy pizza, crunchy wine. This mm. is just meant to be. This is another one of those wines, man, where it's just, it's fresh and it's approachable and it's super tasty, just delicious and happy. It's not one of those wines where you want to just sit and ponder life, but you could. Mm -hmm. But you we can have do. this with anything from pizza to a nice dinner. It's, mm -hmm. But you flexible. Do, you do want to pour it out just to give it a little bit of air, mm -hmm. and you do maybe want to give it the slightest little chill. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that brings the fruit right to the front. How's that pizza? It's good. You should have a piece. Uh, I'm working on it. Okay, good. Um, you know that that what rings true to me is I know what we're going to sell this for. It it drinks over its price point. Mm -hmm. it's you be know, gone. like I would, I would if, agree. The, if you blinded me on this, I would never go with the price point. Oh mm -hmm. um, yeah, we should mention that, right? There's not a lot of it. It's gonna be gone. Sorry. Yeah. It's gonna be gone. Yeah, that is that is the double-edged sword with with falling in love with small production producers. Um, is there's not that much wine. And all I'm gonna say is don't wait for the rebuy. Mm -mm. Yeah. Like, it might not be coming. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for the pizza, dude. Mm -hmm. Thanks for the coke. Cheers, guy. To pizza Cheers. and pizza wine. Mm -hmm. Cheers.